Okay, so good afternoon everyone. So I'm going to give you a situation to begin with, okay? So imagine it's a month end and every one of us are a bank manager or a bank loan officer. And uh, most of us would be knowing that every uh, bank officer has some loan targets to complete by every month end or every quarter end. So uh, a person approaches you and tells you that, uh, boss, see, I have around 100 people and you have to give them loans. The loan amount to each one of them will not be too big. It will be a nominal amount. So will you finance this? So what will be your reaction? Wouldn't you be the happiest person at that moment? But, 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 a few moments later, he tells you, ki jo log hai, they don't have any job. Probably they won't have any home of their own. Probably their family would be of 5 or 10 people. Moe, moe. So, matlab... There is no question of giving loan to such people, right? <laughs> this, this was the exact situation which happened in 1976 when Dr. Muhammad Yunus, the author of the book Banker to the Poor, went to the Janta Bank, which was the sec which which is the second largest bank of Bangladesh. So, Dr. Muhammad Yunus, the name itself is so big. He hailed from a very small village in the Chittagong district of Bangladesh. Now, most of us who know cricket uh, have been following. We know Chittagong is a quite developed region, but it has uh, a relatively a very developed region in Bangladesh. But it has some places which are drought prone, some places which are uh, environmentally backwards. And uh, the village Jobra, where he worked, and uh, Batua, where he was born, are backward regions of the Chittagong district. So, for ranging from there, this person completed his entire education till his master's in Bangladesh, went for his PhD in USA and in the 1971 liberation war that is Bangladesh was uh, that is the East Pakistan Bangladesh was earlier East Pakistan after which uh, it fought a war with West Pakistan that is the original Pakistan that we have today and it liberated in 1971 so he was very active in participation to in that liberation war so after that um, he came to Bangladesh he was invited to Bangladesh and he became a part of the planning commission when you are at such an important position what would you do you have the country is just becoming the country is just born right now and you have a very active role to play in it but this person saw in just one year that this planning commission is doing nothing so he comes he gives a resignation and returns to a university to teach the students about economics and about the experiences that he has but but again what has happened in universities he is teaching the university students but the students are unaware about the activities going outside the university Right now, we are sitting beside the Patanjali Hall. We are seeing a lot of greenery here. Outside the Jobra, uh, the Chittagong University in Jobra, the land was lying barren. There were no trees. And in such a situation, in 1974, Bangladesh was facing famine. People didn't have food to eat. What would have been your ideal reaction? You would have somehow tried to, uh, tried to make that uh, barren land cultivable, somehow tried to give contribution to increase the food, uh, food production, but none of the students saw this. So at that point, Dr. Muhammad Yunus reflects that all the learning which is given is given in the uh, classroom. But the learning which actually happens is outside the classroom. And he decided to take his movement outside the classroom and he decided to take the students out outside the classroom to make them aware of the real world. Now yesterday when we spoke about search, what we learned was think globally, act locally and impact globally. Right? So he did the exact same thing. He thought global. He acted locally and the impact was global. In what way? We learn it right now. So what happened? He found a resolution to solve the agrarian crisis which you will know in, while, while you read the book. He observed that through that method, those who had lands or those who had the sources benefited out of it. But what about those who didn't have the lands or didn't have the sources? What could they do? And he realized that he has to work for them. He found a drive for him being a social change maker. And from there, lifting that problem of Jobra, he found out that people just needed a push. They had the intentions, they had something, they had the spark, they just didn't have the facilities. And he decided that people, we have to somehow give them money. Now, when we speak of money lending, what do you think such people, those who don't have facilities, from where would, be, would they be taking the loans? Local money lenders. Can you expect the rate of interest which the people paid at that time, 15% per, per, per annum. Okay. So the reality was people used to pay 10% per week of interest. 
this he spotted it out that such high interest people cannot sustain even if you cultivate your farm you had to give entire produce in order to repay that loan mm -hmm. they didn't have anything to eat so he spotted the problem and he decided that i have to lend money to them in such a way that they won't feel the pressure to repay it they would repay it but won't have the pressure to repay it and they can utilize their potential and what resulted out of it is gramin bank so what is the concept of gramin bank sabne khana khaya khana khake kya aaya क्यों हम हम खाना खाना क्यों खाते हैं एनर्जी राइट वी गेट द फोर्स वी गेट द पार एंड राइट नाउ हाउ आर डेमोक्रेटिक वैल्यूज आर डिटीरिंग वी आर वी आर बींग ऑफर्ड वॉट फॉर गेटिंग वोट्स मनी और इन अदर टर्म्स वी आर बींग ऑफर्ड रेवडीज आर एंड वी सो वॉट डज अ गवर्नमेंट डू दे गिव एस एटी मिलियन वॉट वी हैव एटी मिलियन पीपल अंडर द रेशनिंग स्कीम एंड गवर्नमेंट छाती पीट के बोलता है कि भाई हमने अस्सी मिलियन लोगों को रेशनिंग स्कीम में इंक्लूड किया इज इट ए थिंग टू बी अ प्राउड ऑफ no it is a one time solution dr yunus says in his statement that poverty is like a wall around the people what gramin bank does is not feeding them to just sustain every day in that wall what gramin bank does is to empower them give them the power to break that walls and come out that is the power of gramin bank which dr yunus believed in and from the last 40 odd years gramin bank has been doing that so how exactly would you would you think that gramin bank would sustain So when a uh, Dr. Yunus was asked this question in a in a World Bank conference, Dr. Yunus simply said that see whatever the commercial banks do, I just do the opposite of it. If they lend to rich, I lend to poor. If they ask for collateral, I ask for no collateral. If you have big legal teams with you, I have no single legal person attached with the bank. That is the way Grameen Bank functions. So do you believe such a bank functioning such well is possible what could be the reason behind such good functioning of the bank trust when we trust people the trust forces them to repay the money gramin bank doesn't uh, lend money to individual people gramin bank lends to group of people so what happens is even if one person fails to repay the loan the entire group becomes uh, unavailable to be given loan so the entire group suffers so under that group pressure or peer pressure the 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 person who is not able to repay the loan also tends to repay it or else if he has some problem the entire group comes together to resolve the problem second thing is loan restructuring so it is basically the thing is that if you are unable to pay a loan give him another loan so that he can pay that loan and uh, the person becomes eligible to go for another loan so it basically loan ko fedne ke liye loan de diya so this is also called evergreening of loan in banking terms but what this facility is now given to those people who have the money and who have uh, failed to repay the loan and few of them have also gone across the nation and still are given money but what uh, mohammed yunus did through gramin bank was he introduced loan structuring for the poor people so a person may take loan for agriculture and what may happen is uh, too much of rainfall or drought his crop would fail but uh, you know uh, dr yunus told him that you don't worry we'll again refinance you you take your uh, uh, crop uh, for the next season and you just repay half of the loan and in the very next season you pay the remaining half of the loan so he gave people the hope the hope to sustain and the hope to fight back and this hope made people believe in gramin bank another thing which dr yunus as i told before did was there was no legal team to keep a follow up of those those people who didn't repay the loan so they were feeling quite relieved that we have no gundas appearing at our door knocking at 12 o'clock and uh, just ambushing our houses and doing what not like they do in today they believed they had a trust in every employee of the gramin bank that no if i fail this employee can believe me believe in my story and i can have the time to repay another very important thing was that gramin bank has does it has the highest number of women depositors so gramin bank has 90, around 90% of the depositors and borrowers are women we spoke of women empowerment yesterday which was not direct but indirect at search in the similar way the purpose of uh, gramin bank was not women empowerment but giving loans to women or giving loans through women has lead to women empowerment and poverty uh, eradication right another important thing which happened is uh the central bank of bangladesh once sent a letter to uh, dr yunus and it stated that uh, isn't it unusual to have such a high number of women depositors or borrowers with you can you please answer us why do you have such a high number the learning the biggest learning of this book came to me from this anecdote it is that if you have to change the system you have to fight the system dr yunus replied to the central bank saying that i'll just request you one thing you send this letter to each and every commercial bank of bangladesh and say and ask them 
that why do they have such a high percentage of male depositors? If they disclose that why they have such a high number of male depositors, the very next day I am ready to answer why do I have the, this number of women depositors. Yesterday we all were thinking that what we can do in case of cheating or if we see corruption right in front of eyes, this is the answer to it. We just have to take the questions to the system, fight against the system and answer it. Another learning which I had from this book, constant will to improve. So yesterday we spoke going deep and growing across, right? So there are two ways to go deep. One is like a, right, uh, like a nail, we go straight in the ground. Other is like a drill, we go round and round and round and we reach it. So what Dr. Yunus adopted is not only poverty er uh, eradication, he went for areas around it, like malnutrition is accompanying poverty nutrition. So he tied up with the French company Danone, you must be knowing about it, and introduced a fortified yogurt, which uh, tried to solve most of the malnutrition problems of uh, the people of Bangladesh. He went against, he went to support fishing, he went to support housing, he went to support uh, telecommunication improvement in Bangladesh, and through this network, he aimed at a poverty eradication. And uh, I missed a point while speaking about women so uh, do you think introducing banking to women would have been easy in a country like Bangladesh never there was the Parda system as you know uh, was active in India the similar system was active in Bangladesh so what used to happen that uh, people uh, the men usually uh, uh, they, they force the Parda system on the woman and the woman would never answer directly to men so what dr. Yunus did he had two of his female students who, who he would take uh, to the houses and they would relay he would stand just outside the house and those two students would relay in between the house and between him and exchange the messages or the conversation that they used to have so the female didn't find it fearful to ask any questions and dr. Yunus could give him all the right answers to inspire them to come into the system and gradually this made it possible that women collectively used to approach dr. Yunus directly after uh, some, some period of time directly to solve all their uh, uh, queries right from poverty to the social to other many social issues so dr yunus has enabled this entire ecosystem just by working on one point of poverty to conclude i would uh, like to quote one of his uh, this is not like a quote in his book but he has used a very good statement which i think so is at the core of grameen bank uh, behind the formation of grameen bank each of us has more hidden inside us than we have had a chance to explore unless we create an environment that enables us to discover the limits of our potential we will never know what we have inside of us so the message of the book is discover what is within you discover what you have to give to the outside world act on it and just accomplish the things that's it thank you